What's going on everyone? Brian Schmidt here from Guardians of the Geckos and welcome to another Gecko Care video where in this video we'll be discussing the general care and information on this gecko species right here. This right here is a gargoyle gecko from the island chain New Caledonia. That's right, these guys are from the same exact place as crested geckos. And because of that, they're gonna have very similar care as crested geckos, but there are gonna be a few subtle differences that we will talk about later in this video. But first, check out this gecko up close. Just look at that structure. Now, gargoyle geckos actually get that nickname, gargoyle, because they have these two horns that kind of form on top of their head there, and it resembles like the old gargoyle stone statues that you see on buildings that were erected back in the Middle Ages. I know many of you 90s kids right now are thinking of the old cartoon show, Gargoyles. We are defenders of the night. We are gargoyles. These two geckos just told me they have no relation to that cartoon. Now, gargoyle geckos have a general lifespan of about 15 to 20 years. And just like a full grown crested gecko, they'll get lengthwise about seven to nine inches long full grown. Just gargoyles will get a little bit thicker or a little bit chunkier from all that extra protein that they like to ingest. Um, and also just like crested geckos, they come in a wide variety of colorations and morphs. And that's one of the reasons why they are so popular. Now, some of the popular morphs are, you have the reticulated ones, blotches, super blotches, super stripes, just general stripes, and different color combinations on top of it. You can have red stripes, orange stripes, red blotches, orange blotches, and everything in between, of course. Not only do gargoyle geckos come in a variety of morphs and patterns, they can even differentiate an eye color. Some will have more bluish eyes, some will have more grayish eyes, and some very rare gargoyle geckos will have what's called a phantom eye, which is a very dark iris. And just like crested geckos, a gargoyle gecko can show off two different types of colorations at different times. It's called fired up and fired down where a fired down gargoyle gecko can show off more neutral colors, maybe typically a lighter base color, where a fired up gargoyle gecko can show off more of a darker base color and more saturated and vibrant colorations on top. So don't be surprised if you purchased a gargoyle at a show with a white base color, you take it home, it may all of a sudden appear to be a lot darker and vibrant later on. Take this little one for example, same gecko, photos taken at two different times. On the left, the gecko's fired down. On the right, he's fired up. Now another reason why gargoyle geckos are super popular is they're relatively easy to handle. They have the uh, stereotypical sticky feet that many gecko species have, the lamellae on the bottom, that's gonna help them stick to surfaces. So when you're holding them like this, they're way less likely to fall off your hand. They're gonna stick to you, as you can see here. Where unlike um, like leopard geckos or fat tail geckos, for instance, they don't have that quality. It's a lot easier for them to fall off your hand. So you kind of have to handle them closer to the ground where gargoyle is uncomfortable um, holding them up a lot higher. Now, I'm not gonna give a gargoyle gecko to a young kid quite yet. That's maybe under three years old because they may not be aware of how tight they can squeeze things. And gargoyle geckos, um, you can still like hurt these guys if you handle them the wrong way. So just be aware of that. Now, gargoyle geckos, if they feel threatened or attacked or their tail gets pinched at all, they can drop their tail. However, they are a little bit different than crested geckos, where many of you know that when crested gecko drops its tail, it will not grow it back. It's a one-time use defense mechanism. Where gargoyle is another reason why people like them is they can regenerate their tail. Now, Carnage here, he still has his original tail, but Crush here, she actually is in the middle of regenerating her tail right now. She lost it several months ago. I think this might actually be the second time she's lost it because she's in a breeding group and it is fairly common for your breeders to get nippy with each other and they easily drop their tails. Check out Crush's regenerated tail there. Now, once she's done regenerating it, it actually looks pretty good. It'll never look like the original uh, tail, but 
Gargoyles do a great job regenerating it. It's, you know, nine out of 10 once they're done. All right, so now let's go over what it takes to care for these awesome geckos. Most important is temperature. Room temperature is perfect for these guys, anywhere from 72 degrees Fahrenheit to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, it's okay if the temperature dips into the 60s for a short period of time, but definitely do your best to avoid any temperature over 80 degrees because it can be very fatal for your gecko. And now, that brings me to lighting. As long as your enclosure is within the correct temperature range, you do not need to provide any additional lighting. Now, with a big enough enclosure, you may provide a low-level UVB light and a low-wattage basking spot, but it's not necessary. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about housing your gargoyle gecko. Now, first, it's going to depend on the size gargoyle gecko you're getting. So first, if you're getting a baby gargoyle gecko or anything under 10 grams, I recommend keeping them in this. This is a small a Sterilite shoebox container. And I'll put the link up here on this side or this side, I'm not sure where it's gonna appear, as to exactly how we make this setup, everything from getting the vent, drilling the hole, all that. Um, and it's a very simple setup. Just have some fake plants in here, some cork bark that gargoyle geckos really like. And there's the baby gecko right there, if you can see him, just chilling on top of that. Um, and yeah, and the main thing is we have a food dish and a paper towel as the substrate. Paper towel meaning, well, the reason we have it in there is it's super easy to clean up. You just change it out every week. And um, you can see if the gecko's pooping super easy, which means if the gecko's pooping fine, that means they're eating fine. So let's quickly put everything back in here. Now, the main reason why we keep baby geckos, not only gargoyles, lychees, chihuahuas, and crested geckos, um, why we keep them in this small enclosure is because the gecko, when they're super small, um, they're gonna feel more secure in this type of setup. If they feel more secure, they're gonna eat better, they're gonna be more active within here, which means if they eat better, they're gonna grow faster. All right, so now let's talk about the general ideal setup for a juvenile or adult gargoyle gecko. Now, there are a few different ways you can keep yours as far as caging goes. Um, we just had the small Sterilite bin for the baby, but you could keep a juvenile or adult gargoyle gecko in one of the larger um, Sterilite tubs um, and of course drill holes all around the rim and everything to get airflow in there. Um, that is completely fine and many, many breeders actually keep their gargoyles in that setup and they thrive and do really well in that setup. Um, but I wanted to show you real quick, this is uh, one of our breeder setups. Um, this is a tall glass 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra tank and it has the uh, front doors that open up which is one of my favorite styles. Um, and this one's nice because, you know, you can actually see your gargoyles um, interacting in there. So let me walk around and show you the front. Now, gargoyle geckos are an arboreal species, meaning they like to spend a lot of time up in the tree canopies. So we definitely recommend sticking with a taller terrarium over a wider terrarium, such as the tall exoterras or zoomeds, so that these guys have plenty of climbing space. Now you'll see online many people recommend uh, getting a 12 by 12 by 18 for an adult gargoyle gecko, which I believe is fine for a juvenile or even sub-adult, but my personal opinion is for a full grown adult gargoyle gecko or even a pair or trio, I recommend this size. This is a nice big size, 18 by 18 by 24. Um, and we actually have a trio of gargoyles that stay in here all the time. Now. Similar to the baby enclosure, we have the paper towel, as you can see here, as the substrate. We have a food dish at the bottom. Um, you don't need to provide a food dish up high um, on the glass. And actually, one thing I really wanted to talk about with this setup, gargoyle geckos actually have a tough time sticking the glass, unlike a crested gecko or a lichianus. Um, they like to latch onto things a little bit better for climbing purposes. 
and just from my experience over the years is gargoyle geckos really like cork bark. That's my favorite thing I love putting in there. So you'll see in this enclosure, I have, you know, a few different pieces of cork bark. There's one, I have them all over the place in here. There's a piece, here's a big piece. Let's see, where's all the gargoyles at? They're all hiding. Um, here's a big piece right there. There's one of the, there's the boy. See, look, he has a little regenerated tail right there. <laughs> uh, this is Rocket, by the way. Um, so anyways, we have these big pieces of cork bark in here and gargoyle geckos, 90% of the time in their enclosures, they are either inside the cork bark or latched onto it. Um, I think that the cork bark, it, it's just that perfect piece that makes them feel very secure and it's very easy for them to climb on. So I set up my gargoyle geckos a little bit different than I do my crested geckos. Crested geckos, I provide more vines and everything at the top, more branches for them to climb on, skinnier surfaces, because the crested geckos, they can also walk easily along the glass and everything. Gargoyle geckos, they seem to always just hang out on the cork bark. No matter if I put a bunch of vines at the top or not, they're not really gonna be on those as much. Now you can still provide that, it's not gonna hurt that at all. But I just find like providing a lot of cork bark in there um, gives them a lot of surface area for them to walk on and jump on. And it makes them, I believe, feel very secure, especially the adults when you have a big cage like this. Now you see we have like this big fake fern in here and a couple other vines in the back. And especially with breeders, um, if you keep multiple gargoyles together, of course, let me backtrack real quick. I only recommend keep, if you want your gecko to thrive as a pet, just keep one gecko in one tank. Don't put multiple ones in there. But for breeding purposes, um, you know, I you can do two or even three females with a single male, that's fine. You just wanna provide plenty of visual barriers so they're not looking at each other on the time. Because gargoyle geckos, they are gonna be some, somewhat territorial. They will pick on each other. And that's why you see gecko, uh, these gargoyles have regenerated tails because they have been nipped at before. But by providing, you know, plenty of ferns and plants and cork bark in here, it provides that visual barrier so that the geckos do feel very secure. Oh, I didn't even see Carnage crawled on that. That's not his tank, so he can't go back in there. Um, but yeah, providing, especially all the cork bark and stuff where they can go inside all these pieces, they can walk around, jump on, hide behind if a male or female is being aggressive with another gecko in the tank um, they may have a little skirmish but they can easily get away from each other and go to opposite sides um, and having those visual barriers um, really provides that uh, for them and i feel like the more visual barriers the more stuff you have in the enclosure like this the more they're going to thrive um, and then the only other recommendation as far as setup goes is I always like to provide, um, and I have a few different variations of this, I'm gonna do a Gecko Tip Tuesday video on this next, um, is, you know, kind of a humid hide. Or for these guys, because they're breeders, this is just a little uh, dish of a bunch of sphagnum moss. And I keep this uh, humid or moist all the time, I'll spray mist it and the females will actually dig in here and lay their eggs, but it also helps with shedding purposes. It provides that little extra of humidity in there, especially with the exoterras, you have a screen top, so it's kind of nice to have this in there. And one last thing you may notice, I don't have a water dish in here. Many people provide water dishes for gargoyle geckos, and I have seen myself gargoyles drink out of a water dish, but I believe if you're consistently um, consistent with your misting schedule, for us, we spray mist our enclosures every single night. Um, I give them a nice heavy mist down at, in the evening and um, they'll lick the water right off the glass walls, the terrarium walls, and it'll help them with shedding and everything. As long as you can stay consistent with that, um, you don't have to provide a water dish in there. Um, you can, it will never hurt, obviously, um, but that's just how we do the setup. Um, However, back to misting, while on, I'm on that subject, I will say um, it's nice to give them a mist down, but you don't wanna keep the enclosure humid 24 seven. 
These geckos, just like crested geckos, need a dry out period. So it's nice to boost that humidity at night when you're misting the enclosure, but a few hours after, maybe about four to five hours, the terrarium should pretty much completely dry out for the most part. Of course, they still have that option with the little humid hide in there we put. Um, but yeah, that's how we miss the geckos and that is how we keep our adult gargoyle geckos with this setup. Now, if you are planning on getting a juvenile or an adult gargoyle gecko, you can go all out with this setup by building out your very own live planted bioactive terrarium. These things are a lot more difficult to set up initially, but in the long run, they're way more rewarding and look absolutely beautiful. All right, so we talked about housing your gargoyle geckos. We even talked about misting and keeping them nice and hydrated. So now equally as important is feeding your gargoyle geckos with a complete fruit mix diet. Now, a common name online with these is a crested gecko diet. And essentially, what is this? This is a fruit powder mix. You basically add a little bit of water to it, to it and it makes like a gecko smoothie for the most part. And I have a more detailed video on how we mix ours up. I'll put the link up here. And the two main brands I recommend going with is Pangea or Rapashi. I'll put those links to those websites where you can order some right now in the link in the description below. Um, I would be very cautious outside of those brands, especially if you're just shopping at one of the major uh, pet chains. Um, they have some sketchy uh, diets out there for crested and gargoyle geckos. So yeah, I'd just be safe and stick with these. Um, but yeah, so it's super simple. We recommend feeding them the complete diet every other day providing them a fresh amount. And I've said this before, I do recommend feeding crested geckos insects uh, once a week. Um, however, with gargoyle geckos, I don't just recommend it. I highly recommend it. So follow me here. Um, gargoyle geckos, when you look at their teeth, they are actually super, super sharp when compared to crested geckos. Hopefully not, but if you ever get bit by a gargoyle gecko, you have a higher chance. It's not, it doesn't really hurt, but you have a much higher chance of bleeding it, drawing a little bit of blood because they are razor sharp. It's almost like getting a pretty good uh, paper cut basically when they bite you. Um, so obviously it's happened to me or I wouldn't be talking about this right now. But with that, because they have sharper teeth and they get a little bit thicker when they're fed well, that just shows me that they do crave insects in their diet. I do strongly believe gargoyles crave a little bit more protein in their diet. So definitely feed them these diets, the uh, fruit mix powders. But I do recommend if you can, uh, feeding gargoyle geckos insects at least at minimum once a week, if not twice a week would be ideal. Um, it is a little tricky to get them to start eating. Um, just make sure, especially with the babies, that the uh, insect is small enough so they're not like skittish and scared of it. Um, but once you get those little baby gargoyle geckos eating on insects, they love them. Just make sure you don't only feed insects. Many people have that problem and they realize, oh hey, my gargoyles really like insects, let me only feed them that. No, you want to still definitely provide their all-in-one diet because like I said, they're going to get all their nutrients from that. Um, but yeah, back to the insects, you just want to make sure, just like the standard rule for all reptiles, you want to make sure you gut load your insects, especially if you're feeding crickets. Gut loading is making sure that the crickets are eating a good diet because they're going to pass those nutrients onto your geckos. Um, and not only that, but it's equally just as important to make sure you are dusting your crickets with calcium. Easiest way is get a big cup put the crickets in there, put some calcium powder in there and mix it on up and then feed those crickets to your gargoyle geckos. I think that's all we have for you in this introduction to gargoyle geckos and care video. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot of information on these guys. One of my favorite species to keep, just super rewarding with the amount of colorations, morphs, patterns there are. I'm always super excited to see what's gonna pop out of those eggs. And yeah, so I uh, hope you liked the video. Make sure to comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other questions. And yeah, as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and 
I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. And remember, don't just impulse buy any type of reptile. I know, gargoyle geckos are super, super awesome, but that doesn't mean you should just jump right into them. Make sure to do plenty of research so you completely understand what their care entails and that they are the right pet for you. Not only that, do a cost analysis. Understand how much the gecko is going to cost, but as well as their housing and how much their diet is going to cost throughout the year. And last thing, if you're certain you're going to get a gargoyle gecko, just make sure you get the setup together ahead of time so that when that gecko arrives, they can go directly into their enclosure for a stress-free transition.